sorry. I, I just was hoping that maybe if I got really, really close that I could see you. And you guessed it, I can't see you. Still, isn't that funny how every week you're at your house and I'm here and you see me and I can't see you. So can you please ask your moms and dads super nicely once again to comment on Facebook or YouTube and tell me that you're watching? Awesome. Thanks. I'd really appreciate that. Right. We are going to play a game before we have our Bible story today. For this game, you are going to need your eyes. Everybody got your eyes? Good. And your thinking caps. For what we are going to do is I am going to show you three different pictures of the same object. One of the pictures is going to be super, super close. The next one's going to be a little further away and then the last one is going to be the whole picture so you can see it all right now you are going to have to guess what the picture is and you're going to need to keep score on your own at home because i can't keep score for you i can't hear your guesses but do your best tell somebody at home what you're guessing all right so i'm going to show you one picture if i show you the first picture it's worth five points if you guess it correctly the second picture is three points and if you guess it on the last picture you get one point okay awesome before we play that game let me just jump on here and say hi to some awesome friends of mine so one of the friends that i really wanted to say hi to is troa How's it going, Troa? I am glad you're here today. Then I really wanted to say hi to Hannah and Elisha and Isaiah. I'm so glad that you guys are joining me today. Thank you so much. And of course, Nathan and Lily and Callie and Anthony. Hi, friends. I'm glad you're with me today. And William's here. Hey, buddy. Glad you stopped in. I sure miss seeing you at church. And Jaden and Haley, Savannah, good to see you. Well, kind of, you see me. Thank you so much for saying hi. I am glad you joined me today. All right, are you guys ready for that game? Let's get started. I'm gonna show you that first picture. All right, you see it? Hmm, what could that be? Give your guesses. These are your five point guesses. Okay, let's jump to the next picture. See what it looks like. Oh, I see a little bit more detail here. You got some three-point guesses in there. Way to go. Okay, now let's see what it is. Last picture. Oh, my word. Check it out. I should have known what that is. I have a ton of those in my yard right now. If you guessed dandelion for one of those pictures, you can add up your points. That is correct. All right. Now let's check out that next set of pictures. Looking at picture number one. Got some guesses. Get those five point guesses in there. Okay, let's see the next picture. Ooh, there's a little bit more going on in this one. You got your three point guesses. Very cool, and let's see what it is. Oh, it's a guitar. I'm sure you guys were able to guess that one, right? Okay, add those points together. We still have a little bit more to go. All right, let's check out the next picture. Picture number one. Hmm, what do you think? I see some green and some rose. Okay, give those five point guesses. All right, now let's check out the next picture. Okay, we got a little bit more detail in there. Give those three point guesses. And finally, let's look at that last picture. Yup, it's a giant leaf. If you guessed giant leaf or banana leaf or palm leaf or something leafy, you get those points. Okay, add those points together and we have one more set of pictures that we're gonna look at. You ready? Let's look at picture number one. Hmm, what do you think that is? Super close up. Give those five point guesses. All right, next picture. Okay, we definitely have a little bit more going on in this picture. I think you probably know what it is by now, but give those three point guesses. And we're gonna look at the last picture. You guessed it, it's an orange. That's your one point picture. All right, add up your score and you can tell me how you did in the comments. I would love to know. 
That game reminds me of our story today. Just like we looked at a small part of a big picture, we're going to look at how some different people played important parts in a very big job. Let's check it out. And now for an amazing true story from the book of Exodus. God rescued his people from slavery in Egypt and led them out into the wilderness, where he spoke to their leader, Moses. Come up to me on the mountain. Moses stared up at the distant peak of Mount Sinai. Um, okay, God. Moses climbed the mountain and God's glory came down and covered it. God spoke to Moses through the cloud, giving him instructions so the people would know how to live and so they would know about the unique way he designed for them to draw near to him. Have the people make a sacred tent for me. Make it exactly like the pattern I will show you. God gave Moses every detail for a huge tabernacle, a big beautiful home for God that could be packed up like a tent. It sounds amazing. It sounds incredible. It sounds absolutely impossible to build by myself. I have given ability to all the skilled workers. They can make everything I have commanded. Oh, well, that's good. It'll be like a, a group project. When Moses climbed down the mountain, he searched for his brother Aaron. God wants you to serve him as a priest. Who, uh, me? Yeah, you. And all your sons. You'll wear sacred robes with a turban and belt and a linen apron and bright colors of yarn and... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What? Uh, just stop for a minute. Listen. I don't hear anything. Look around you. Um, tumbleweeds? I don't see any shops. No, not one. I don't sew. Do you sew? Nope. So, are these fancy robes? Don't worry. God has given some of the people special skills to make them. Group project? Hmm, you could say that. What about a place? All we've got out here yeah, is- Yeah, I know, tumbleweeds. God's got that covered too. Call the people together. When all God's people gathered, Moses told them all the amazing things God had said. Aaron and his sons will oversee a special place where we can draw closer to God, a beautiful tent called a tabernacle. An elderly man named Hur cupped his hand behind his ear. What's that? We're gonna play Pinochle? His grandson Bezalel, a lanky man with a quick smile, yelled in Hur's good ear. No, he said we're going to build a tabernacle. We need some belt and tackle? A tabernacle. Mana crackles? Oh yeah, it sure does when it's toasted up nice and crispy. Grandpa, I gotta make something for your ear to help you hear better. Maybe I could shape it out of, of bronze or... Everybody else had questions about the tabernacle, too. Who will build it? What about all the things to go inside? God has chosen someone to lead the building. Bezalel. The old man, her, rubbed his knuckle in his ear. God chose a tuna melt? No, no, he said Bezalel. Bezalel. Wait, what? Me? God has chosen you, Bezalel. He has filled you with his spirit and with wisdom, understanding, and all kinds of skills. Yeah, but, but I'm just, you know, your average Joseph. God has given you the ability to make beautiful patterns in gold and silver and bronze. You can carve stones and work with wood and just about anything else, too. <sighs> this is such a big job. Group project. God has also given Oholiab the skills to help you. A red-headed young man with strong arms jumped up from the rock where he was sitting. Yes, you won't be disappointed. I mold a mean chair about a gold. <laughs> I mean, mean as in awesome. Yeah, yeah, got it. Uh, but this is still a pretty colossal job for two people. A table and a lampstand and an altar and... That's why God has given you both the ability to teach others. You'll have as many workers as you need. <laughs> Sweet! Wait, what about supplies? God's got that covered too. This is a job for everyone. If you've got something you want to give to the Lord for building the tabernacle, bring it. The people begin to crowd forward. Take my gold earrings and this necklace. I've spun all this linen, yards and yards of it, and lots of red yarn. I got this amazing olive oil to saute my manna, but 
Well, we can use it for the lamps in the tabernacle instead. Soon Bezalel and Oholiab had everything to craft the tabernacle and everything that went inside, including the robes for the priests. Now we just need to, you know, train some minions. Okay, tabernacle school, who's in? Me. All yeah, right, let's do on. this. Yeah, everybody. Bring it on. Yeah, cool. Count come me on. in. Let's do this. God's people all came together, offering their skills and possessions. They did all the work, just as God commanded. And when they finished, Moses took the grand tour. It's perfect, down to the smallest golden almond blossom on the lampstand. The tabernacle was complete. With God's guidance, his people had created an amazing place to draw closer to him. Together, they all did more than any one of them could have done alone. You know what's so cool is God gave special skills and abilities to individual people so that they could all work together to do the big job of building the tabernacle, which was a really big tent that was gonna become God's house. Now, no one person could do the whole job. God can do that, but he likes being able to show his cool abilities through each of us. We each get to be a part of God's church now. It's not a tent. It's not a building. You know what God's church is? It's all of his people working together to share his love. You can think about it this way. In order to bring you church at home, there's some individuals working together to share their skills and abilities that God has given them in order to make it happen. For example, I get to say hi to you on Living Faith Kids. There's some cool friends of mine who play musical instruments or sing so that you can worship at home. And I have some friends who get to hold video cameras so that you can see me and you can see everything else that's happening at church. Not only that, but there's a whole bunch of people who do jobs and have skills and abilities working behind the scenes on things that you can't even see, but they're really important. Now, you don't have to be at church in order to share God's love. You can share God's love right at home in your family. I know that you all have really cool gifts and abilities that you can use. Maybe you are really good at drawing pictures, or maybe you make a stellar paper airplane, or maybe you can run super, super fast. Whatever it is, God's given you gifts so that you can share God's love with other people. And I want to hear about them. So answer this question for me today. What gifts has God given you to share? I would love to hear your answers to that question. Can you do me a favor and ask your parents to record your answer on video? And then they can share those videos with me at melissaw at livingfaithfellowship.com. And maybe you don't know the answer to that question, you're not sure what you're good at, I'd encourage you to ask your parents or ask God, say, God, what is it that I'm good at? How can I share your love with other people? I'm excited to hear those responses and see them next week. All right, well, speaking of church, I hope you'll join me after this so we can worship together and hear a message from Pastor Joe. And, rem and before I sign off, I wanna say, hello to the Shelton kids and say a special hi to their cousins, Heidi and Millie. I'm glad you guys came today. Thanks for joining us. And I'll say goodbye to the Lancasters and Littlefields and of course, Shelby, Aiden and Micah. Thank you so much for stopping in to all of you. Even if I didn't say your name today, know that I am glad that you are here and I'm glad you are part of God's family. All right, I will see you next week. Remember, God loves you and he has big plans for your life.